My name is Natalie. I am a student at Missouri Western State University um, in the Education Department, and I am here to bring you three writer's workshop lessons that you can do either in the classroom or at home during this weird quarantine-y time. These are Missouri standards and um, directed towards second graders. The first lesson um, goes along with this standard, which just says, following a writing process to plan a first draft by brainstorming and recording key ideas using a graphic organizer. And then the lesson idea for the first lesson is creating and drafting ideas for future writing. I have my papers, which is what I'm reading off of. Um, the lesson objective would be second grade students will be able to successfully brainstorm 15 ideas to be used for future writers workshop. The materials needed are an old magazine, scissors, glue, paper, coloring utensils, clipboard, pencil, and a children's book. The anticipatory set, like to get your children excited about this lesson, would be uh, get them excited to write their own story or narratives to start off with talking about writing a story. Then there's a video to watch. It is called Inventure Junior Brainstorming, and it's on YouTube. You can look it up and find it by that link, or I'll try to link it in the description. I'm not quite sure how to do that, um, so we'll see. Then modeling, the teacher will read a book, and this is kind of um, in the air whether the teacher, you can have the students come over and use their clipboards at this moment, or you can have, um, you can just model in this moment and then have the students come back at a different time with a different book with their clipboards but the idea is um, at first the teacher is reading a book and she stops he or she will stop in the middle after a page that said let's say the page said the dog went to the park um, the teacher will pause and say oh the dog went to the park I remember when I went to the park with my friends and had a lot of fun that is something I would write about so the idea is to find inspiration for uh, the individual in the story so the students should get five ideas from a read story, um, the one that was read to them for their auditory learners. So that was the first thing. And then to check for understanding um, of just brainstorming, I like to use thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways. Um, that is one of my favorite things to check. It's super easy because you can get a quick visual of how many students are thumbs up. Yes, I 100% understand. Thumbs sideways, I'm not quite there and thumbs down I am struggling and do not understand it's really easy and you can have the thumbs up people turn to somebody who is thumbs sideways or thumbs down and just give them a quick explanation they can ask a question so then reconvene after they're done talking and then you can just ask again thumbs up thumbs down thumbs sideways and uh, hopefully most are up at that point um, but if some are still sideways or down depending on how many there are you can call them up individually to ask a question or you can call them right then. Guided practice for this lesson, students will get in groups to draw pictures of what they would like to write about. So this is supposed to be in groups, so this is a moment where the classroom will be loud and loudy. Loud and rowdy, okay. <laughs> loud and rowdy. This is when students are encouraged to talk, so somebody writes a picture of a cookie because they baked cookies with their grandma and somebody else sees it and goes, oh, well, I baked muffins with my grandma since she draws muffins. So it's kind of bouncing ideas off each other. And again, the goal is to get five ideas from each activity done. So the drawing pictures is for the kinesthetic learners. And then the independent practice would be you cut out a silhouette of the, of the side of a person's head um, and you cut out magazine pictures and words and glue them onto this head so that the student can see what they like and it's kind of like a vision board type thing. To close out this lesson, um, they're going to do the lesson standard, which is to fill out a graphic organizer with pictures or words. At this point, it doesn't matter. It's just to remind them of what they want to write about. And to follow that up, students will pick their favorite idea to share with the class, like the favorite thing, so they can say, oh, I baked muffins with my grandma, or oh, I went to the park with my friends. So they would pick two of their favorite ideas to share with the class. And maybe for those who struggle to hit that 15 mark, could get some ideas from other people. The second lesson of the Writer's Workshop trilogy, if you will, um, goes along with this standard, which just says, appropriate to genre type, develop a draft from pre-writing by sequencing ideas into clear and coherent sentences. Um, so <clears throat> that is the lesson objective and the lesson idea would be a personal narrative for the students to write. Um, the lesson objective is 
second grade students will be able to complete a first draft of a personal narrative using complete sentences. The materials needed for this one are a worksheet, Allie and Ollie, which is a C-level book on A to Z learning, writing utensils, paper, and coloring utensils. To get your students ready for this lesson, um, get them excited about improving their own writing with details. So talk about what books they like to read and what makes them like those books. Next you would show a stretchy sentences video. This is called Stretchy Sentences by Teaching Independent Learners. Um, it's a really good video that really visualizes why stretchy sentences are important and needed with pictures and she explains it really well. Next you would do some with them on the board from the Ali and Ollie book. So at second grade level, you would hope that they are above a C reading level. So these books, this Allie and Ollie book specifically, um, you would hope is way too easy for them to read because it is very, very simple. Um, so you will do the first couple pages with them on the board uh, of this book writing by looking at the pictures. So there's pictures where Allie and Ollie sat. Um, there's a picture of them in this brown and colorful chair when they could add parts from the picture to the sentence. So you would do that with them first and then for guided practice they're going to go to groups and then they can practice their stretchy sentences with that. Then independent practice they are going to write their first draft of their personal narrative. And this obviously is not going to just happen all in the same day so you would space that out throughout a couple lessons. Closure is to share this story with their partners, to share their first draft with their seat buddy or, um, you know, a partner. And follow up to this lesson would be to draw a picture of their personal narrative, a picture that um, embodies their personal narrative. The final lesson in the Writer's Workshop trilogy goes along with this standard, which just says, with assistance from adults slash peers, use a variety of conventional slash digital tools to produce and publish writing. I took this as either they can write it or type it, which is important and I think um, would be great for the students is to give them the option whether they want to write their book or type it. So that gives them maybe more incentive to stay engaged while completing this writing process. The lesson idea is going to be their final draft. The lesson objective would be second grade students will successfully write a final draft of their story to be presented. Materials include a paper slash computer, whatever the student chooses, uh, writing utensils, three prong clear portfolio. Now this is something I think um, is exciting for students especially in a young age, is to be able to create something that is presented in a nice, clean, clear folder. Whether they write it or type it, I think either way, just to keep them engaged, um, can still be put into one of those clear portfolios with, I will help them create a cover page and everything, and even their picture could be in it if they wanted. Just to get the lesson started, you would talk about the final draft of your narrative. Hopefully you guys are coming up and hopefully the children are excited about it. Hopefully this is something that they want to finish. Next you would show the students a final version of what this would look like. This is something that the teacher could have made up themselves or um, something from previous years if this lesson has been done before. But just show them how nice it will look when it is all finished. Um, modeling. So this is something where their teacher will help show the students how to type, how the best way to use Google Docs or Word, whatever your students um, are using. Hopefully they have some background of this from their computers class if that if they have that. The next is guided practice, which isn't really necessary for this lesson because you have to be able to finish it on your own independently, but guided practice, the teacher is going to be available for questions on spelling or computer error or those sorts of things. Um, and independently, students will finish their story. Uh, for the closure for this lesson, they will read their story and show the picture that they had drawn previously. So they'll get to read their story to the class and to follow up. Um, I think it would be a cool idea to put all of your folders, all of your portfolios in a basket and put that in your classroom library for other students to read whenever they want to. So I would encourage at the beginning to 
have the students write about something that they would want other people to read. So, so I know some students would write some, about something personal, um, which is okay for some assignments, but I think for this one, it would be a really cool idea to have these narratives available for all the students to read during free time um, when they aren't reading towards their AR goal. And that concludes all three of the writer's workshop lesson plans that I have prepared. Hopefully you will try these out and they will work well and thank you for watching. Hey, I'm back this time a couple days later and with guided reading lessons instead of writer's workshop as well these lessons are for first grade versus the last section was all second grade so this one is first grade. My first lesson has to do with retelling. The standard for this lesson is Retelling main ideas in sequence, including key details. The objective for this lesson is first grade students will be able to retell a story when prompted, including the beginning, middle, end, and two extra details. To get your students excited about this lesson, you should talk to your students about the importance of being able to retell a story, which is something that you read, or something that happened to you. Both are equally important. To model things for your students, the teacher will tell a popular story like Little Red Riding Hood or something like that. And even you could ask the students what's a popular easy story like Three Little Pigs, Little Red Riding Hood, Goldilocks Three Bears, like those kind of things that are easy to tell and the teacher could just come up with off the top of their head. Um, they are going to be using the five finger method which is characters, setting, beginning, middle, and flip to detail. The materials needed for this lesson are a book your hands and a pencil for the worksheet. Pretty simple this lesson is. Um, to check for understanding, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways per usual. Guided practice, students will split into their reading rotation groups. So hopefully if you have rotations for reading, this just fits right in. So when they come to the teacher, they're able to read a book with you and individually and as a group tell the beginning, middle, end. So one student will do characters, one settings, one beginning, one middle, one end, two details kind of thing. For independent practice, after the whole class reads a book, whether that be like an Amelia Bedelia because those are funny or something like that, um, a children's book, they will be able to go back to their table, turn to a partner, and retell the story. And then for closure, they will be able to tell a, their table either their favorite thing that happened, like favorite, I don't know, vacation, just, Kind of that's kind of up in the air it could be something that happened to them a favorite book they've read um using the five finger retail so it should not take long you should be able to do who's who's there where was i what happened at the beginning what happened in the middle what happened at the end so it'll be relatively quick and then just to follow up there is a five finger retail worksheet that they can fill out for the second lesson the idea is distinguishing between fiction and non-fiction the standard is Read, infer, and draw conclusions to distinguish between fiction and nonfiction. Um, the objective for this lesson is first grade students will be able to distinguish between five out of seven fiction or nonfiction images in a group. Then to get your students excited about this lesson, talk about true stories and made up stories. Ask them what is more fun for them to read. And there's no right answer, obviously, just to get an idea of other students say, oh, well, so-and-so likes to read about historical events kind of thing. Then for the input, you're just going to watch a video um, on YouTube. Again, this one is called Fiction or Nonfiction by Cantana Learning. It's a pretty good video. I'll link it, the, I'll link it below. Check for understanding. Again, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs either. It is my favorite way to check for understanding. So the modeling is a PowerPoint that I made. It's super, super easy, super, super quick. Um, it's very simple. It's just pictures so you can go through with the class. There's like a cartoon pig and then a real pig. Which one would be fiction? Which one would be nonfiction? Um, there's a picture of people on Mars versus an astronaut, like a real picture of an astronaut in front of the Earth. So it's kind of being able to distinguish such things like, yes, so a fiction can be about a pig, but it's probably a cartoon pig versus a real life pig. Guided practice, students will play the line game. So there can be, a, whether you put an actual line down with tape or you just kind of split the room in two, um, you can say a concept of a story like the pig 
talked to a spider and the, the students can either go to the fiction side of the line or the non-fiction side of the line. Um, then you could say, oh, the prince slayed the dragon. They go to the fiction side or the non-fiction side. For independent practice, there is a really simple worksheet where they just circle if this book is fiction or non-fiction, if the sentence is fiction or non-fiction. For closure, there's going to be two books. One is fiction, one is non-fiction. You split the students into two groups or more groups. It just kind of depends on how many students or if you're at home, what you're working with. And then you, so they read the two books separately and then they can combine for follow-up. The person who read the non-fiction book will partner up with somebody who read the fiction book and then they can discuss the differences, similarities kind of thing. So maybe you have them about the same topic. Have something read about a pig in a fiction book and a pig real book kind of thing. And that was lesson two. For the third guided reading lesson, the idea is to describe sensory details. And this is the standard which just says read, infer, analyze, and draw conclusions to describe sensory details. The objective for this lesson is first grade students will be able to add at least five sensory details to a simple story with a partner. The anticipatory set to get your students excited is to describe your students a pizza in great detail, be sure, being sure to hit all five senses. So you can describe the sound of the pizza man coming to the door, the doorbell. You can describe the smell of the pizza, the look of the cheese glazed on top, and things like that to make sure the students' mouths are watering and that you get them to understand what the point of this was. For the materials, you're gonna need a level AA book, a regular book, like a regular children's book, coloring utensils and a writing utensil. So for modeling, you're going to read a good book and point out sensory details. So if you're reading a chapter book in class, that would be a really good idea. Like if you're reading it to them, um, whatever chapter you're reading, you can point out the sensory details in that chapter. Um, for the input, you should tell the students how important these are. To check for understanding, as always, some ups and downs and sideways, I know that there are other ways to check for understanding, but this is so quick and so easy and is really helpful, I think, for not only the teacher, but the students too. For guided practice, the students are gonna add details to a very simple book um, in a group and then rotate groups so you can get more ideas. So the book I use, I believe it's called At the Lake. Um, it's a double A book found on a to z reading.com. This is so simple. The book, the words are, are this lake, this dock, this swimsuit, this sandwich, that kind of thing. So in that they could say this yellow delicious sandwich, this purple comfortable swimsuit kind of thing. So I'm hoping that in the different groups they will come up with some different words. So one person looks at the swimsuit and says it's purple, the other person looks at it and says it's comfortable. So then when they switch groups they can say oh it's both purple and it's comfortable or it's purple and it's polka dotted and those kind of things. Um, for the independent practice they're going to draw a picture and write a, a sensory word for each sense. There should be five words to describe whatever picture they drew. Um, for closure, they're going to share their picture with a friend, they're going to talk about it, and their friend is going to share theirs back. And then for follow-up, the pictures are going to be displayed around the classroom. So I really hope you enjoyed these six lessons, both Writer's Workshop and Guided Reading. Again, the Writer's Workshop is second grade. This is the Guided Reading was first grade. And I really hope you get some use out of this, and it was a really fun project for me to do. Uh, thanks for watching.